say hi everybody and say welcome back. Today we're going to learn about Lekka. Okay, so in this video, we are going to be covering five main reasons why I like to use Lekka, and B is going to be my assistant. Reason number one that I like to use Lekka is because I don't like dealing with a fungus nap. So, yeah, when we had most of our plants in soil, there were so many fungus gnats. We bought these little sticky pads that you can get on Amazon or from the store. And they're these bright yellow pads, and when we would come back to them after a couple of days, it would be so speckled with gnats, you couldn't even see the yellow. So it was beginning to be a problem, and I tried pretty much everything to get rid of them. And that's kind of when I started looking into LECA, actually, because I was like, okay, I love the plants, but I honestly can't deal with this. So. The reason that LECA does not promote the growth of fungus gnats is because fungus gnats need an organic environment and that doesn't happen in LECA because it's inorganic. It's just porous clay, basically. Pros and cons to both having organic soil or inorganic LECA. I prefer having inorganic LECA. You do have to substitute that organic bit, the part that gives nutrients and is allowing the plant to decompose its macromolecules to get some kind of benefit from it. All of that, you can make it in the nutrient water and continue to feed the plant through that, but I think it's worth it to have the inorganic substrate or media that you're growing it in because that really does help cut down on the gnats. So that's kind of the first big reason. The second big reason is just the mess. Like when I was using soil for everything, it was always this big ordeal to repot a plant. So you'd have to have this big, you know, we move the coffee table out of the way and we get this big tarp and so it just gets everywhere. It was always all over the place. I don't have an issue with, with soil. It's just the fact that it's so much easier to clean up LECA when it drops. Reason three that I like to use LECA is because it's reusable, it's sustainable. So I know that's kind of a weird thing to say because it's like, well, isn't soil also kind of sustainable? Yes and no. When you get soil, Usually it's organic or it has some kind of a nutrient in it, it's good for the plant, but that plant will suck up those nutrients. Like when you're using LECA, the plants will suck up the nutrient water and then you just replenish the water. But whenever you're using soil, like that soil will get kind of dead. You basically have to rejuvenate it by adding nutrients back into it for it to be able to be reusable. And also, a lot of things can go wrong with soil. So since it's organic, it can harbor fungus, specifically fungus gnat. You can't really reuse soil that has fungus gnats in it unless you just want to spread your fungus gnat infestation or whatever fungal infection is afflicting your soil. So LECA is nice because you basically just boil it and then you have sterilized it. The reason for that I like to use LECA is because it takes some of the guesswork out of underwatering versus overwatering your plants. So every plant has its own specific type of water that it wants. Like, do you want water all the time? Um, like polka dot plants or begonias where they get all wilty and sad when they haven't been watered and they get dramatic and you think they're dead and then you water them and they perk right back up. So they just, or like calatheas that are humidity lovers or fiddle leaf figs that like to be watered thoroughly but not often. They like to be drenched and then dr dry it out completely before getting another watering or else they're very susceptible to root rot. So basically each plant has its own needs. You know you've seen those memes that are like, Make sure you get enough water and take time for yourself and get sunlight because you're basically just a plant with complicated emotions. That's very true. Just like people, just like plants, we all have very different needs and so that's how plants are with watering. Um, and one of the cool things about LECA is, it's so it's porous. So when you pour water into the reservoir, because of the porous nature of the LECA and because of the growth hormones like oxen that are released by roots when they're thirsty and they're trying to push growth. Roots will kind of wrap around the LECA, like you'll see they'll start to grow over the LECA and they will almost emit like a suction and drink water almost like you gave it a straw. So instead of saying like, oh, I'm just gonna dump water on you all the time or I'm just gonna completely neglect you, LECA is like saying, hey, I'm just gonna give you the straw and you can just drink at your own will. So you'll fill the reservoirs of your plants and you'll notice that they will drain at different rates. Part of that is gonna be because of different sunlight if you have them in different locations or different amounts of humidity or dryness in the air but um, the bigger the bigger factor at play there oh hi 
is that each plant drinks at a different rate, wants a different amount of water. The leka will actually, the roots will grow down into the bottom of the jar if they are just so thirsty that they're like continuing to drink more water. Um, and those ones will drain a little bit faster than the ones that don't grow down as much and maybe sit on top of the roots and they go it drains very slowly that just means that that plant is literally drinking less but it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it all you have to do all you are responsible for after all the initial work is just making sure your reservoir is full or that you have you know a third of your container is the reservoir full when you own plants for a long time i feel like you just start to get the feel anyway of how much they like to drink you just get their mannerisms into your head but even so Lekka just really takes out all of the guesswork and I guess that merges into my fifth reason which is just the ease of ma maintaining your plants once they're in Lekka. The ease of maybe entrusting it into the care of somebody that's like house sitting for you while you're gone and you have 300 plants and instead of having to explain to, to them how you water each one like you know put your finger into the soil and feel as a damp and blah 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 like just say oh you know make sure that you put this water in about a third of the way up and that's it and that's all they have to remember it makes it a lot easier to maintain a ton of plants especially if you're like me and you have like a full-time job and then you have a side business and then you're applying to school all right this is reason number six that i like This guy, you can see there's a root that's kind of grown down into there, and that root is still, <laughs> that root is still white, which means it's healthy. When the root is that kind of like white color, that means that it's doing really well. I like that you can monitor your plant's root health. If this were in soil, you would have to literally dig it up, so to speak, and get all the soil off of it, but in this, you can literally just check on how the plant's doing. So this one's in pretty good health. The roots are kind of starting to grow and like suction around the leka. And when I take it out, it'll definitely be sticking to the leka and I'll have to kind of like loosen it a little bit. The water level's still good here. It's about a third of the height because I just filled this the other day. So I'll put this one back and show you another one. Okay, this is funny. So this is a philodendron mecans. <laughs> when I'm explaining how to do leka, you will always hear me say, that you have to rinse the leka. You have to soak it for 24 to 48 hours before you use it. People say that it doesn't actually matter and that they just run it till the water runs clear and it's fine. I did that this time. I kind of just took the, I took the hydroton pellets. I basically just ran it through the water until the water ran clear. And look, two weeks later, you can kind of see there's like salt that's accumulated, even though I've had, it's filtered water and everything. Um, these are salts that have formed on the top of them. I mean, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but these salts are not the nutrients the plants are trying to absorb. They're trying to absorb the nutrients in this nutrient water. This is going to clog these pores up and keep them from absorbing all the nutrients they need to. So these plants, these meat cans, they're not in terrible shape. They're not, in, they're not really in bad shape, but they definitely would probably be happier if they were in non-calcified LECA. And you can kind of see here the root, it's not unhealthy, it's doing okay, but if I were to let this continue on for a really long, significant amount of time, it probably wouldn't be the best for my plant's health, so I wouldn't want to do that. And also, this is running low in nutrient water, so I'm just going to fill it till about that. Here's another example from the batch that I didn't rinse all the way through, so you can see here, this is where you don't want. <laughs> and this I just did as an experiment, I would not recommend doing this to like plants you actually care about. Um, I do care about this plant. I'm going to flush all this very soon. Might be doing better otherwise, but since being in Lekka, I had this leaf and this leaf over here, and it's given me all of this. So that's really exciting. It didn't take very long for that to happen. Usually it's in a clear receptacle. This is actually, as you can see, an opaque pot. I wanted to keep it in this white pot because I liked how it looked. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to change the media because I really wanted to try out Mecca. So I just basically took a giant gallon-sized Ziploc bag and I just put the Lekka in it, nutrient water about a third of the way up, and Lekka. And you can actually lift this to kind of check the water level. It is a little bit of a pain and it's not as aesthetic, but it definitely works and they're, they're not unhappy. So this one, I actually bought this like mother chopping. 
I bought this from somebody on like Facebook market for 10 bucks and then this guy where'd it go this guy popped out so I kind of freaked out thinking oh my god it's an Albo I don't know if it is it hasn't given me any indication of white otherwise but anyway the point is this is also in Lekka and I don't even have a Ziploc bag in this one I just pretty much like I do this and I kind of hold it up to the light and try to do the water test and then I just make sure it's about a third of the way full of water and it's been thriving. I've had no issues. We interrupt this video to show you some roots. Here are some of the cuttings that I've been propagating as of late. So it looks like it looks like my begonia is doing pretty well. It was kind of sad, but look at all that root growth just from being in fresh water that I change every few days. And then here are some others. Here's Pothos, Nanook. A pro tip that I've learned, root plants, a few root cuttings with Tradescantia species and Pothos species. I think just because both are such rapidly vining and rapidly proliferating species, like Tradescantia, it's actually considered an invasive because of how fast it proliferates. So it's because they've released plant hormones called auxin that allow new growth. And when you grow them together, that's just absorbing a higher level of auxin. So propagate your plants together. It's actually good for them. So here's another example. I just kind of wanted to show you some of the ways that I display and have Lekka because I think it's like really clean and pretty too. So here is a little itty bitty baby Diffenbachia and he's probably getting a little bit low but he's okay still right now. This Lekka has been rinsed really thoroughly. It's nice and clean. And then here's another one. This is a Hoya. I believe this is a Crimson Princess. This Philodendron Birkin is actually, he's been pretty happy in Lekka. Another little trick that I've learned is just to take like a chopstick or a fork or whatever. Something wooden though is a little bit better and you just kind of jam it down in there and then you can see the height that it was and use that as an indication of how much water is in there. So if you don't have a clear receptacle, that's okay. It's not the end all be a spider plant in Lekka actually. And it's doing fine. Um, I have a Ziploc bag inside of it, kind of a similar setup. And then up here, so this is actually a grow light. You gotta get creative when you live in, in Ohio. Um, but there's a grow light up there. And it's actually been a very successful reproducing season for spider person. If you watch. Rick and Morty, you will understand that reference. Um, okay, so yeah, they're just chilling up there and they're, they live a happy life and they just keep multiplying and I keep putting nutrient water down there and it's a nice little system I've got set up. So honestly, if you don't have a clear receptacle, it's not the end all be all to have a clear receptacle. Um, you can just get creative with really whatever you have. Like this is just a standard lamp and then I put a plant inside of it, so. Okay, quick little stop to just check out my little germination station on the way over. But that's for a different video. Look at those monstera. Okay, I just finished getting ready for work and I just wanted to walk you guys through my greenhouse really quick before I went. that oh <clears throat> beanie do you want to be in the video so i have to see if my cat wants to be in the video Moving 
right along.